Howdy there, folk. It's Icy here. A few people had suggested that I start doing commentaries over these little build time lapses I've been doing to help people who don't play from the depths make sense of what's going on and give other people some you know, context into my thought process behind what I'm doing and why I'm doing certain things while I build. And honestly, I thought that was not a bad idea. So I'm giving this new format a shot. So. Give me a shout down in the comments below if you prefer this style over just having the music like I've been doing in previous episodes. So I didn't really go into this with any sort of idea besides making a dirt cheap little starting scout ship that could go toe to toe with the early Deepwater Guard vessels like the Sea Adder and the Urchin and that sort of stuff. After getting the very base of the hull done, the first thing I wanted to prioritize working on was the engine. And the first thing I did was what I normally do, and just stacking superchargers and carburetors on top of one another. But I eventually decided against that because I wanted to try and finally learn how turbochargers worked. And I easily played with this for a good half an hour or so, and just could not figure out how to connect them at all. So. You'll see later on I eventually started spawning in prefab engines to look at how they did it to try and make sense of all this. And I think eventually I just kind of gave up because I don't think I ever actually like figured it out and I just didn't feel like dealing with the spaghetti of pipes that I ended up with that I'm pretty sure most of which didn't even properly connect to anything. I eventually said screw it and decided the engine was as good as it's going to get since I was tired of working on it, I wanted to work on the rest of the ship, and I didn't really care about engine efficiency. So the next thing I started working on was flushing out the hull, and I went ahead and put the upper deck directly above where the engine ended because I wanted to try and keep this thing as compact as possible to keep resource costs down. And I believe after I got the basic shaping done, I started painting the engine to make it easier to get to after I finish the ship when I need to do tweaking and stuff like that. I found that color coding your vital components makes them a lot easier to find later on. After that I quickly plopped down some ammo as well as the AI and I ended up wrapping the ammo in a bunch of heavy armor slopes because despite wanting to keep the cost of the ship down, I also was a little worried about it getting instantly killed by a single shot, which is what tends to happen with some of the smaller Deepwater Guard ships. Oh, 
Up next I started working on the gun, which unfortunately I had to put directly over the ammo storage because I already had ideas on what I wanted to do with the other two parts of the deck. Uh, when I first started on this I wasn't sure if I wanted to use simple weapons or a small advanced cannon, and I ended up opting for the latter purely because of the customization options available. And in the end it ended up being a 120mm cannon that shot hollow point frag shells at about 40 rounds per minute. Which honestly is not all that good, but it does a decent enough job of punching through wood, which is mostly what's going to be facing. So that said, I recorded the building of the ship back in uh, July, and now recording this in September, there's been a big update that's added a whole bunch of new simple weapons. So I might be going back and retrofitting this and maybe replacing that little APS turret with a simple weapon now. Now moving on to the front portion of the hole, I started working on a secondary weapon to help back up the cannon just in case it got popped off by an explosion or anything like that. And my initial idea was to put these torpedoes that I'm building on spin blocks and have them pop up out of the hole when an enemy is detected, and then fire and close back up. And that way there wouldn't be two big holes in the front of the ship that could let their shots come in and destroy the internals. But unfortunately, after several hours of tweaking the field of fire and other various settings, I just could not get them to work consistently. So I eventually scrapped the idea and just had two fixed torpedoes placed on the front instead. So after a while of me shooting my gun at my friend's ship, and he shooting his missiles at me in turn, I decided that the cannon had way too much recoil for such a tiny little boat, even with all the recoil stabilizers that I put on it. So I ended up adding these little wooden wing-like things to help counteract the recoil and keep the ship upright. And seeing these made me think, hey, they're like a tiny little deck, maybe I could put cargo boxes or something like that on there to just give it a little bit of touch. But I ended up getting rid of that and instead putting a door to the inside with a little wooden ledge to the engine room. Not that it actually matters or anything, but little aesthetic touches like these, like, you know, stairs and I'm about to build a little cockpit for me to drive around in even though the entire ship is AI controlled. Just little touches of detail like that I appreciate and I think it makes it a lot more fun than just having a blob with a gun on it that moves around on its own. I don't know what happened here, but our boats kept colliding into each other while we built, regardless of the collision avoidance systems we put in our AIs. Don't really know what's going on there. Next on my to-do list was the detection equipment, and I don't really have any rhyme or reason to how I do that, I just kind of stuff it wherever I have room to put it. And honestly, with how much detection equipment I ended up putting on that turret to make sure the gun had really good accuracy, is probably half the cost of the ship itself. So if I ever end up retrofitting this and replacing that turret with a simple weapon, uh, 
boat probably going to be a lot more cost efficient with all that detection equipment stripped off. Though that means I'm going to have to find a different place to put it. Unfortunately, because these things tend not to go my way, after fixing the issue with the recoil making my ship tilt from side to side, I had to fix the issue of the propulsion causing the ship to flip backwards. But thankfully that was a simple enough fix, I just had to move the large propeller up a single block. And with that, I believe the tadpole is complete. Uh, I'm tentatively calling it a patrol boat for now, but let's be honest, by from the depth standards, this is practically a dinghy. Regardless, I had a lot of fun making it, and I hope one day I get over all the weird bugs I've been having when I play from the depths, and I'll be able to use it in a campaign. Something I noted while testing the weapons a little more is that the fragmentation shells have a tendency to pop the balloons on small airships like the Atlas and the Hoplite, and then the torpedoes finish them off after it falls into the ocean. And that's not even really anything that was intentional, that's just something that kind of happened, and it made me really happy to see the different weapon systems working in synergy like that. But regardless, I think that's everything. Uh, I'm going to save off on painting it until I end up making fleet colors for an actual faction, but who knows when that might happen. So. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed, be sure to check out the links to my discord server and all that stuff down in the description if you want to hang out, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!